Now, five important types of adaptations that they commonly ask you in the exam is going to be atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia. Now, given all these options, I don't think I have to explain the meaning of each of them, but atrophy simply means a decrease in the size and function of cell. Hypertrophy would just refer to uh, an increase in the size of the cell as well as an increase in the function. Hyperplasia referring to an increase in the number of cells in that given tissue and therefore by virtue of more number of cells. Uska kaam zada ho jayega. And metaplasia would simply be a change. Right? The point that I want you to understand and just be very categorical in answering this kind of question is there are two ways of, uh, you know, framing questions in your exam from this. One way can be they can ask you a question, which of them is the only important example of a, let us say this is an example of a more than one kind, more than one option correct kind of a question. So which of them can be an example of a pre-malignant change? Which of them can be an example of a pre-malignant change? A trophy can be an example of a pre-malignant change. It can have a progression into malignancy. If you talk about hyperplasia, hyperplasia again can progress into malignancy. Metaplasia can again have a tendency to progress into malignancy. The only important example of adaptation which is absolutely benign is going to be hypertrophy. Because that's very, very high stuff that they put up to you in the exam. Now, the second point is, if you've already had a class of OBG, as I've been told, then you may be able to understand the fact where exactly is atrophy going to be progressing to cancer. That's a condition that is going to be given the name of endometrial atrophy. And when you talk about histologically, the two subtypes of endometrial cancer, there are two subtypes, type 1 and type 2. So which type of endometrial cancer is going to be having endometrial atrophy as a precursor lesion? Agar estrogen zada ho rata hai, endometrial cancer ka risk bada jata hai. Nulli parity is another risk factor, then diabetes mellitus, then, you know, presence of excessive amount of estrogen. But that endometrial hyperplasia can give rise to the cancer as well. But what is the difference? The difference is in case of hyperplasia progressing to cancer, that's an example of a type 1 endometrial carcinoma, whereas atrophy progressing into cancer is going to be a type 2 endometrial carcinoma. As a clinician, why that's important for you to remember is that patients who are having endometrial atrophy and then progressing to cancer are going to be having a poorer prognosis. That's associated with a poorer prognosis, right? So that will be an OBGY question. The other thing I can help you understand would be that they will be giving you certain types of clinical situations. And most of you would be able to find that very comfortable for you to answer that in the exam. For example, if you're going to be talking about any kind of an injury at the level of a muscle, at the level of the nerve, you know, there is a presence of a disuse atrophy. Those kind of questions are quite commonly going to be given to you. For example, a patient has come to me and unfortunately, let's say you have to answer this for me. This patient was having the presence of a kidney stone. Because he was having the presence of a kidney stone, the patient was having a diagnosis of obstructive uropathy. What kind of a change would I expect to see in the renal cortex of this patient? Obstructive uropathy. Surgery ho chuka aapka, aap mein zata logo bata, obstruction ho gaya patient ke. So the patient is having an obstructive uropathy, which means the patient is going to be having accumulation of the urine over here. If the patient is going to be having the accumulation of urine over here, then this is going to be responsible for causing a development of a hydronephrosis-like situation, right? Now, if there is a collection, if there is a collection present at the level of the renal pelvis, this is going to be putting more pressure at the level of the renal cortex. Therefore, what will happen to the size of the tissues? So if there is going to be a comparison of the level of the renal cortex, this is going to result in the development of a pressure atrophy. Pressure atrophy. Suppose I give you another question in the exam, which is going to be a very, very important question. There is a lady who happens to be 25 years of age. And, uh, you know, this lady uh, was expecting, she gave birth to a baby. And then... What is the expected change out of these adaptations, which is going to be taking place in her uterus, which is going to be observed in the postpartum period? In the postpartum period, what is going to be the change observed in the uterus of this lady? Read the question carefully. I understand as and when this question is given to you, a lot of people are going to be raising. It is not disuse, my friend. If the patients are going to be talking about a pregnant lady and we are talking about something like uterus, we are going to be having the presence of hypertrophy, hyperplasia existing together. But my question was about the postpartum change. So after pregnancy, once a baby has been delivered, the uterus which has increased in size. So uterus bade gaya tha size ke andar, usko chota hona hai. Wo jo chota hona hai, that would be an example of a decrease in reduction in size. That would be an example of atrophy. So classical example of situations where you have to just keep in mind what is the question which is being put up to you. The other one that they put up to you in the exam, recent exams ke andar, I had a one-liner question about few years back. That was the guy who happens to go to a gym. And this guy is going to be having presence of very beautiful, you know, cut out biceps and triceps. So that's an example of a skeletal muscle hypertrophy. That's an example that you need to be familiar with. The other example that they talk about over here is a patient who's going to be having the presence of the valvular stenosis. Say, for example, something like a aortic stenosis. The, that patient could be having a presence of something like a left ventricular hypertrophy. 
Hyperplasia increase in number is very, very important because as they say, hyperplasia is going to be given the name of, this is a one-liner question again, that's a fertile soil. You have to remember the word, it's a fertile soil for the development of a cancer. One-liner question, hyperplasia is going to be an example of a fertile soil for the development of a cancer in the future. So this patient is going to be having a high risk for development of cancer. Now, if you related with your knowledge of microbiology, I hope we are a lot of you are good at that as well. Some of the patients are going to be having the presence of what is going to be given the name of a viral wart. What is the causative organism for a viral wart, by the way? Viral wart, genital warts. What is the causative organism? That's going to be something like, yes, a lot of you are aware of it. Low risk for subtypes, human papilloma virus, HPV. So again, why are they going to be causing the development of viral warts? Because the number of cells are going to increase. Viral warts, low risk subtypes, 6 and 11. Viral warts, low risk subtype, 6 and 11 are responsible for development of increase in the number of cells. That's what is going to be given the name of a hyperplasia. So viral wart ki image dikha dega, exam ke aur aapse pooch lega. What is the adaptation which is going to be seen in the patient? I hope the, the questions are making sense to you. In the other adaptation that is a hot favorite for examiners, we are going to be given question the exam, which is going to be something like metaplasia. Image-based questions, ke liye, that's a most common, that's a most common image-based adaptation that is being given to you in the exam. Whenever we are talking about metaplasia, that can either be an example of an epithelial metaplasia or that can be an example of a connective tissue metaplasia. Now, the question which was asked to you in one of the recent exams was, what is the pathophysiological mechanism? Mechanism kya hota hai? Metaplasia ka. What is the mechanism? The mechanism that is going to be responsible for development of metaplasia is, and the word that you have to remember is, reprogramming of the stem cells. Kabhi bhi body ke andar, kisi bhi tissue ke andar. I hope most of you are good at English, but sometimes intermittently I'll be using Hindi as well. At times, there is going to be presence of stem cells. So whenever there is a stress, jab bhi stress hoga, jo stem cells honge, wo apne aapko reprogram kar lenge. Jaise hamare exam aate hai, mein simple example bolta hoon, aapko hamare exam aate hai, to aap padhai zyada start kar dete ho na yaar. It is as simple as that. Jab exam khatam ho jate hai, uske baat to koi kitab nahi uthata na. Jis din exam ka last exam hota hai, usme party wale mood mein aa jate hai na. So adaptation hai, change hai. So there is a reprogramming of your brain cells, right? Aise hi reprogramming of stem cells is responsible for development of metaplasia. Now, between the two types of metaplasia, obviously, number of epithelial cells in our body are going to be having a, you know, easier kind of a change. So, epithelial metaplasia is far more common in comparison to connective tissue metaplasia. Right? Metaplasia ke saath mein important cheez hoti hai, jo aapne dhyan rakhne hai, maan li jay normal epithelium thi, iske oopar kisi bhi prakar ka hai, there was any kind of a stress on the normal epithelium, there is a change in the nature of epithelium or connective tissue. So, that would be given the name of metaplasia. The good point about metaplasia is, if you remove this kind of a stress, this is an example of a reversible change. It's an example of a reversible change. Metaplasia itself is not an example of a cancerous situation. Metaplasia itself is an example of a benign thing. Right? It is an example of a benign change. But if it is present for a long duration of time, for sure, this can progress to a cancer. This can progress to the cancer. Uh -huh.